Hey guys, um, this is a stock Z190 flywheel, which we've rigged up with a cover off, made a little adapter here so we can have a pulse coil on the outside so you can see what's going on. Um, I've marked out the time marks, TDC, first advance, that's that idle and, and cranking, um, full advance, and there is a second stage advance, but our little uh, CDI we're using won't go any more than uh, the full advance uh, first stage. Uh, this is mapped out on the big flywheels what your marks are so 17.5 degrees 25 degrees 30 on full advance so if i uh, go and fire this up well actually before i do it look this is the trigger so it's the short trigger the six mil stock one that the engines come with um against r1 if you look on the right that's our 15 mil one versus the six mil. So that's the bit that gives us the, the whole flux that causes the advance. Um, I'm gonna crank it up quickly. All right, fire in the hole. region of about possibly 15 or, or less. So I'm going to bring the revs up now. we saw there uh, was 17 and a half degrees the first mark let's have a look oh there you go right so that's our first mark which is 17 and a half degrees and that's all it went to so it you know pretty much 15 or under and just ramped up to 17 and a half so if I change the flywheel really quickly nothing's locked tight at the moment so it'll come off Fairly easily. Good tip if you're pulling flywheels off, you've got to be careful because they've got a bell mouth on the end of the crankshaft and obviously the tool's tapered as well. So um, a good trick is to lubricate everything, um, especially the, the little spike on the end. And if it feels too tight and it's, it's sort of um, pushing too hard, you just back it off again um, sometimes we have to heat the hubs up to get them off because if you try and force it off with the puller you can end up belling this right out and then destroying the end of the thread and you can't, just can't get the nut back on without loads of work you know grinding and etc right so ignition corrector going on like so there we go I'm just gonna waz it up that on 14 mil I'm not going to do with that. We'd normally be locked tight in all of this. Okay, same marks again. TDC, 17.5, 25 and 30. But as I say, with this CDR we're using isn't going to, uh, it's a shotgun actually, it's one that's slightly retarded. So it's not really going to go any more than 25 on that mark, a little bit over. Um, right, I'm going to fire up. I'm just going to eye in that pulse coil gap. Yep, that's a better mil. Firing the hole. Okay, timing light on. Okay, so all of a sudden, we're up at about 17 degrees, 17 and a half. I'm going to bring the revs up. sudden we've gone from a max of 17 and a half degrees up to 25 in that video there um, which is obviously a, a fair amount of advance more which is what they want you know when you're sort of pulling up hills and stuff I mean ideally they could do with a bit more advance but 
you know, on the safe side of things, um, it, it, they work well. There's a big difference in cylinder temperature um, and obviously external temperature between them being retarded uh, and having that much more advanced. So uh, I hope that video does clear things up for the guys that are sort of asking the questions, why, why is it advisable to do it? Well, it is really, uh, as much as they will go on um, on standard, but it, it really does help the top end, you know, mid to top, um, and sort of, you know, just initially off the mark, just they, they, they love a bit of advance early on. All right, guys, hope it helps.